Today, I am at a private claim, actually. I got permission to collect here. There's some interesting radioactive minerals uh, here. There's uh, thorite crystals that you can find here. So that's what I'm after today. So I'm going to do some poking around and see what I can find. And I will show you guys if I find anything interesting. I got some pointers from f some friends who've been here before who also got permission. Uh, they gave me some pointers on where to look. So I'll try my luck and see what I can find. And if I find some interesting stuff, I'll definitely show you folks. I don't know if I'm 100% in the right spot, but this was a spot I think my friends were collecting at the last time. <laughs> they basically said it's a, a road cut, but it's just dirt. And it looks like it's been dug out a bit. And you can see here, you've got what is diopsite and calcite. And at this location, um, the thorite is found in combination, is often found in combination with this really blobby, ugly uh, diopsite. A lot of the thorite crystals from here are quite... Um, not too aesthetic, let's put it that way. Um, you can find sharp ones. My goal is to try and find a sharp specimen. So, the background radiation here is a bit higher than usual. Uh, I've, it seems to be about, at least in the spot I'm at right now, is 190 to 220-ish uh, counts per minute. And now I have to do this with one hand. This is a piece that I believe is thorite because when I put the count in the Geiger counter to it, it goes haywire as you can see. It, it's climbing. So that piece I believe is thorite. And then I've got some small pieces here that I think at least two, the the two, these two, maybe are thorite. I think that is a just a small diopside crystal, well formed diopside. So we'll uh, test it out. I'll hold them close and see if the counter goes up. And it doesn't look like it, so I think those might just be diopsides. Or if they are, they're only faintly radioactive. But yeah, just gonna dig out basically the soil, sift it, and go over with the Geiger counter. And if it reacts violently, I know I've got a thorite in there. And then I'll try and pinpoint it more uh, accurately. But those are some fossil arms. The only real thorite I found so far is this one, and as you can see, like I said, it's covered in diopside, so the crystal shape is not the, uh, not the most aesthetic. So in this spot, um, there are other spots in this on this claim where I don't think you can do this, but on this spot, you can actually kind of pinpoint where the thorite is in the dirt. So I had a hot signal here. Um... And in fact, I actually have a hot signal over there as well. Um, and I dug out that area and the signal dropped off. And I sifted out the material that I dug out. And I believe it's this piece. Oh yeah. That, that's a spicy rock. Hopefully you can see that number. So this chunk of red is a thorite crystal. Cool. Uh, as you can see, once again, not super aesthetic. And that's mainly due to the diopside that's here. It forms around the thorite and makes it quite uh, blobby. So I'm in a, a little bit of a different spot. This was a hole I believe that my friend dug. It fits the description. And he was finding some good, some decent, sh uh, uh, shaped uh, thorites. I just pulled out this small one. As you can see when I hold the Geiger counter up to it. I hope that's showing up. 
But I know there's other stuff in here because the second I put my Geiger counter in there, you can just hear it beeping away. So I'm going to dig that stuff out and see if what I can find. Since this area has uh, pretty decent radioactivity, it's hard to pinpoint the uh, thorites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out, out of the hole, sift out the material, and then dump all the material into a bucket and take it off to the side where the background radiation is a lot lower. And then that way I can actually more accurately pinpoint the, um, the thorites. So the sifting is working out well. I'm kind of, uh, as I'm doing it, I'm also kind of just picking out ones that I think are thorites. Um, in fact, I have one, a decent sized one here, actually, that it looks like it's the right shape. And it's got that dark rusty brown. Now, obviously, there are other ones that have the dark rusty brown, but in person, there seems to be a slight difference with the thorites, with their their color. So I'm going to put this one off to the side. And uh, when I go to check everything with the Geiger counter, I'll definitely check this piece. Because this might be a decent sized thorite by the looks of it. But yeah, it's working out well. I'm kind of sifting the material, the qu quickly looking through it to see if I see any ones that look like are uh, obvious and then the rest gets thrown in the bucket and I'll check it with the Geiger counter later. This pocket seems to also have some pretty coarse um, like diopside. In fact, it's like I got a decent little thumbnail specimen of diopside. Looks like the crystal's complete. That's pretty cool. Found a couple pieces like this with pockets with uh, crystals in them. And this one, in fact, if you look right there, you see that wedge-shaped crystal? That's a tiny little titanite crystal. Which I wasn't expecting here. But that's pretty cool. I'm not going to test all of the stuff that I grabbed that I suspect is thorites, because I'll just test them later at home. I can just clean them up and do that individually instead of wasting time out in the field. But I know for a fact both of these are thorites. Look at that number go up. That's pretty fun. Some decent sized ones and some good shape to them actually, so I'm quite happy. But yeah, I guess still gotta go through all my sifted uh, material uh, and then I'm gonna keep digging. I think I see one that is an obvious thorite. That looks a lot like a thorite crystal. It's pretty well shaped, I think. And it would suck. It would suck if I'm wrong, though. Because that looks really... That looks like a thorite crystal. And like a pretty well shaped one for this area. But who knows. I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna... After this sift, I'm gonna take my bucket because I got a decent amount of material in there and start doing some Geiger counter and then I can check specimens like this to see if they're actually thorite. So this was out of my last bit of the bucket. Some decent little uh, uh, thorites. I think this is the best one. So small uh, two, uh, one pigging backing off and the other. It's pretty nice. Also found this little diopside, which is fun. But yeah, this method seems to work well. I think I've got a very sharp, large thorite here. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Those are some sharp faces. Holy cow, that's huge too. This size, you don't usually see them this sharp, so that is, that is definitely a really... Awesome find. Here is that diopside all cleaned up. It's actually a pretty nice example for this location. There's a... It's not too common to find diopsides this size. It was, it was kind of an interesting little pocket where the diopsides seemed to kind of get larger, which also made it better for the thorites as well because 
As I mentioned before, the Thorites get covered in this weird diopsite grain. This is a really productive spot. I just kept following that dirt vein down. And look at all those. Like half of those I could just tell by shape that they were Thorites. All from that little pocket. And some of them are pretty well shaped. I have to thank my friend uh, Aaron for finding this hole. Because holy cow, is it ever productive. So that's the hole. And you can literally see that there's like uh, crystal faces on the sides. Like some of the thorites have been pulling out of here have literally just been crumbling off of the, crystal, uh, the like the matrix on the sides, which is crazy. This hole is so abundant that I can pick out the, like I can actually spot some of the thorites just by eye. Like here's one. This is one. Uh, that looks like one. Another small one. But yeah. It's pretty crazy when there's so much of them that you can just kind of sift out so, the, the material and pick out them just by eyeballing them. You don't even need the Geiger counter. That's how good this hole is. I am done for the day. I'd say I did pretty well. I'm thinking this piece, I thought it's, I said a thorite, but I think it might be like a uh, pyroxene or amphibole. For those wondering if it would be safe to drive with this in the back of my vehicle, this is what the Geiger counter reads when it's in the bucket, which has the material in it, around uh, 1,400 counts per minute. And this is the counts per minute in the front of the vehicle where I'm sitting. It's sitting around 35 to 40 counts per minute, which is generally fine. Here we have another large diopside specimen. Nice large sharp crystals. It's on a kind of a scapolite diopside matrix. I'm sure there's a couple small thorites in the mix as well. This all came out of the same hole that I was digging in for the day. Some of the smaller diopsides have good luster to them, which is pretty cool. And these two are some nice examples with some lustrous faces, plus they're double terminated and have pretty well-defined crystal faces. Cannot complain. So with the thorite here, it's not actually 100% thorite anymore. Uh, this is due to the fact that it undergoes something called metamictization. Um, and basically just, that just means because of its radioactive nature, thorite is just degrading down into other minerals, i.e. other radioactive minerals or uh, other non-radioactive minerals, uh, which is kind of interesting, which is why a lot of the thorites on this claim are quite kind of amorphous and blobby. I mean, the diopside coating doesn't help as well, but a lot of them tend to lose their crystal shape. So I am quite happy to have found a couple examples that have the basic crystal faces on it still, and still retain the crystal shape. Now these aren't the sharpest, but I would say they're sharper than a lot of the ugly blobs I left behind. Another half decent one with good shape. You can still see the kind of the crystal termination, but they do tend to be heavily degraded due to mictization. But overall, still very fun to find and collect. Nice little addition for a famous radioactive site in Canada. This is the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Those who haven't already, and if you like this video and you like what I'm doing, please do like and subscribe. 
that really helps out the channel. And please below, um, in the comments, let me know what you guys found uh, interesting or liked about the, this video. I always appreciate that kind of feedback. And folks, just have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.